Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God, Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, 
Who told you you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I have forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman who you put there with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tripped me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be damned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly you shall crawl, and dirt you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike you at your head, while you strike at his heel. The man called his wife Eve, because she became the mother of all the living. The word of the Lord. reading of the letter from St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accordance with the favor of his will, to the praise and the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him, we also were chosen, destined in accordance with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hope in Christ. The word of the Lord.
The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. She was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her, who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. My homily will be very brief tonight. Mike is giving a reflection after communion. First of all, I always like to clear up a misconception. I think often people uh, think of the Immaculate Conception as referring to the conception of Jesus. Actually, it's Mary's conception in her mother's womb. She was preserved free of sin, even original sin, from the moment of her conception in her mother's womb. That's what we, that's the event that we're focusing on and rejoicing with the Lord, um, praising the Lord for that great event that he brought about in her life from the moment of her conception so that she would be a worthy dwelling place for um, his son and her son. I'd just like to also I mean, always marvel at the painstaking preparation that the Lord um, brought in order to bring about the sending of his son. He first of all had to prepare a people, the Israelites, thousands of years. We go back to the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then all the prophets, and the people that were prepared during those years, generation after generation, all to prepare for the sending of his son. In this moment, when Mary is immaculately conceived, is a key moment in that long line or road of preparation. And what a moment it is. All of this shows how much the Lord indeed desires that we be saved. That we be set free from sin so we can rejoice with him along with Mary forever in heaven. From this moment of her conception, she was prepared to be a dwelling place for our Lord. And he wants us to be dwelling places as well. We are temples of the Holy Spirit, but he wants to be a dwelling place. And so in a few moments, we'll be receiving Holy Communion. Let's pray that through the intercession of the Immaculate Conception, we can indeed be a worthy dwelling place ourselves for the Lord who comes to us in this marvelous way in the Eucharist.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, let us place our needs and petitions before our loving Father. For the church, may God's grace help us grow ever more faithful in our discipleship and loving in our everyday lives. For this, let us pray. Lord, we are prayer. For the protection and safeguarding of all life from conception until natural death, let us pray to the world. Lord, we are prayer. For those experiencing division within their families or communities, may God of peace help them reconcile their differences. For this, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and dying in our faith community, may the love of Christ bring them comfort and hope. For this, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the deceased members of the WST Medical School class of 1967. For this, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, trusting in your goodness and your mercy, we place these needs before you through Christ our Lord. A preparation hymn is number 879. Hail, Holy Queen enthroned above, number 879.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord is your sacrifice at your needs for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Graciously accept the saving sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant that as we profess her on account of your prevenient grace to be untouched by any stain of sin, so through her intercession we may be delivered from all our faults. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and, and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you preserved the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son and signify the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb, who would wipe away our offenses. You placed her above all others to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model of holiness. And so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you and with joy we proclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. 
in giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth your, with your servant, Francis our Pope, and David our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. Your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the earth of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not at our sins with the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 932, One Bread, One Body, number 932.
This time I invite uh, Mike to offer his reflection. Eve is our first mother, but Mary is our new Eve. And I think it's beautiful that Mary discerned properly, which gives us hope. We all know the story of Eve. God gave her freedom and God gave her love. And she lived wonderfully in the garden. And because of God's freedom, she could do what she wanted. And what she thought she wanted wasn't what she really wanted. So what she wanted, as we all know, she was told, God said, don't eat of the, the tree. And what must have gone through her mind, what must have gone through her mind as she was considering doing it? God, God is wonderful, but why can't I? What's wrong with, why can't I? I should know. And she then chose to make herself God, and we all know how that came out. Um, that, that brought sin into the world, and that brought um, the need for baptism. We have the first Eve. And then we have the second Eve, Mary. And as Father said, this is the feast of her immaculate conception. And that is the key right now. It makes them even. Eve was born, created without sin, and so is Mary. Mary was created without sin, so she can be the new Eve. And I have this image of Mary that we, we read today in um, St. Luke's Gospel as being this wonderful young lady who lived and grew up in a fine Jewish house she must have been smart, I think, and I certainly think she had a high level of emotional IQ. She knew what was happening around her. And so what must she have been thinking when the angel appeared to her? Hail Mary, full of grace. And then Luke says she was troubled and The Greek word, which I will not pronounce properly, so I'll just drop that, we, as in our translations, are, is troubled, but a lot of people say it really means it's, it's more than that. And it's, it's like food, and it's like, it's like water, boiling water. It's like clouds before a thunderstorm swirling around. Or you go up to Lake Erie, and you see the waves come crashing in, and the, and the water's all stirred up. So I have to believe, really reflecting on that, in that discernment, it's like, what am I going to do? That she must have had, that it wasn't just, I just don't picture Mary as being, 
a dish rag or a doormat that, yes, 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 I'll do whatever. No, I think she was a bright, intelligent woman who realized what she was assenting to. And what she was assenting to, she was stirred up. She knew she was a good daughter, and this could bring shame to her family. She knew she was a good member of her clan, and this would bring shame to her clan. She knew that she loved her um, Joseph, and this could bring shame to Joseph. All of that is good reason to say, I don't want to do that. I choose me, like Eve chose herself to put herself above God. But luckily for Mary, she did. She assented to the higher thing. She chose to be in unison with God's will and God's plan. And thank you very much, Mary, because we are all beneficiaries of that. Eve chose, like we do so often, to make herself her plan, but really, it's the grace of being in, a, being in union with God that really gives us our life and our strength. And when we go out on a limb on that, we benefit from that. So, that's a nice reflection, Mike. But how does that apply to me in this busy time of my life? And I'm not born with an immaculate conception, so I make mistakes and I make wrong choices. I find much hope in this. Because, because of Mary's saying yes to the Lord, her son came into the world. She influenced him. She helped his love. And through him, when we make mistakes like Eve, instead of choosing the right answers like the second Eve, it's the basis of our faith that God is there loving us and picking us up and getting us back on the right path and letting us move in the right direction. So, Immaculate Mother of Mary, pray for us that we may continue to discern the Lord's will and reach out to your son when we fall and have, let him open his arms and pick us back up. Let's pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, heal in us the wounds of that fault from which in a singular way you preserved Blessed Mary in her immaculate conception. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our concluding hymn is number 457, Sing of Mary. Mm -hmm. 